Welcome to the 7 Minute Marketing Podcast with your host, Pam Didner. As a leading marketing and sales enablement strategist, keynote speaker, and author, Pam created this podcast to share her professional experience and insights and help you achieve better alignment between sales and marketing. If you enjoy this podcast, please share it with your colleagues and leave a review on iTunes. Now let's get started. Hey, it's Pam Dinner here. So happy to do another episode of 7 Minute Marketing from Portland, Oregon. About a month ago, Carter Hostley, president of Retail, hosted a dinner for his friend Ted Rubin, who came to Portland to MC a marketing event at Intel. He invited me to be part of that dinner and asked me to share my thoughts on overall content marketing trends. You know, just a quick informal chat. It was a very intimate dinner gathering with 8 to 10 marketing professionals. We talk about marketing trends, share personal stories, or just talk about whatever topics that happen to come up at a time. Delicious meals, great wines, excellent conversations, just what a great dinner party should be. It was fun to see Carter again, as I haven't seen him for almost two years. The last time I met him, he was just moved to Portland from San Francisco. I asked how he has been doing. He told me that he has been doing well and super busy. It turns out that he has grown his agency to almost 20 people. Damn, well done, Carter. Very impressive. So I asked him what any consultant or small business owners would ask. So, Carter, how do you find your customers and prospects? To my surprise, Carter told me that he doesn't do typical outbound marketing. Hmm, that is intriguing. If you don't do outbound marketing, how do you find your prospects? His answer was one word, community. So here is how he does it. Rather than doing typical digital outbound, he spends his energy proactively to nurture and grow his community, or I call it network. His community consists of industry experts, professional colleagues, consultant, agency people, and influencers whom he considers friends. He hosts regular get-togethers. He usually invites 8 to 12 people from his community to attend his dinner party. He carefully orchestrates the dinner party list by bringing 1 to 2 influencers or industry experts and 8 to 10 agencies, consultants, or brand marketing managers. So it's a mix of people. The influencer and industry experts are the draw to get people to attend the party. Carter provides the influencers a platform to share their insights and the thoughts as a way of steering some interesting and intelligent conversations. Attendees get a chance to meet industry experts, enjoy the dinners, network with the fellow marketers, and having wonderful conversations. So it's full went. Hashtag win, 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 win. But here's a one interesting observation from me. Carter's target clients are startups and mid-sized companies, not big enterprises. And he regularly turns down enterprise clients because it doesn't fit his business model. So I was puzzled why he invites major brand marketing managers to attend his dinner parties. Is he wasting his time and money? They are not even his client base, if you think about it. And there's no real payoff. I asked him why he does that. And he answered with one word again, community. It's really not about him anymore. It's about the community. He doesn't need to meet enterprise marketing managers. But his community members, such as agencies or consulting friends, or even industry experts or influencers would love to talk to them. It's really about creating networking opportunity for his community, even though there is no direct benefit to him. And I thought that was very smart and thoughtful. Carter's approach of getting prospect is a long play. He proactively nurtures and expands his community and makes an effort to help his network whenever possible. So whenever they have questions or requests, Carter would do what he can. He doesn't invite one person for one dinner. Over the years, the same person may attend several dinners. Throughout the courses of these dinners, Carter gets to know them well, and they get to know Carter and his community well. Slowly, these people become his advocates. 
if they see opportunities that fit Carter's service offerings, they send prospects to Carter. In a way, his community and monthly dinners are his version of outbound marketing. But not focusing on digital outreach or relying on the machine algorithms per se, but on human connections, which he calls the human algorithm. Again, human algorithm. I thought that was a great term. I participated in his dinner in Portland and one more time in Silicon Valley. It's always fun just to know other fellow marketers, whether they are on the client or agency side. It really doesn't matter. Carter made an effort to introduce me to his community. I reciprocated by sharing my network with Carter and his community. And I guess that's how referrals work, if you think about it. Like Carter said, you just never know where and when your next lead will come from. It's nice to network and to build those human connections to foster that potential opportunities. Again, it's not something that you can do once and check off. You need to spend time nurturing and working on it, like any relationship. And Carter has been doing dinner parties for years. On the other hand, my approach for finding prospect is completely different than Carter's. Although I don't do paid marketing, I still do typical digital outbound marketing. I make sure that my website is optimized with the right keywords and the content. Then I create content on a regular basis to drive traffic to my website and to build my thought leadership presence. I also make an effort to speak at marketing conferences. In addition, I do virtual cold calls in which I reach out to potential prospects by sharing relevant content on LinkedIn. Lastly, I also run email campaigns to my subscribers. So if you think about it, I rely on SEO, content marketing, email, and the virtual cold calls to find prospects, which is, you know, typical of outbound and the demand generation efforts. By talking to Carter, I realized there's no one way to find your prospects. There are many ways and channels that you can use and leverage. The key is to understand what works for you and create a model that you can repeat every week, every month, and every year. Both of us agree that the best way to get leads is through referrals. And the best way to get referrals is to do a great job for your existing customers and be helpful to your past and existing customers and network. At the end of the day, you just don't know where your leads will come from. If you have your own approach of building your prospect pipelines, please reach out and let me know. Let's keep sharing and learning from each other. All right, take care. Have a great day. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your colleagues and leave a review on iTunes.